Oh, man. What a beautiful, beautiful small jaw. And for as far north as we are, that's a big dude. So this is the one. Yeah, this this is the show that I, I didn't want to do. I, I, I mean, I, I've been doing it for years and I didn't really talk to a lot of people about it. That is the weirdest part about my job when you really think about it. As an angler, I mean, generally most people watching right now are anglers, I assume, right? And you know how anglers think. I mean, you catch a fish, you find a spot. The first thing you want to do is not tell anybody. And uh, I didn't for a lot of years, but but the trials and tribulations of my life is it is my job to show you guys some stuff. So I gotta let a few secrets out and the float and flatworm is really an incredible asset. And, and it's so amazing because for years I've had it in my boat and a lot of guys would get on my boat and see it rigged and be like, oh, you've been crappie fishing? And I'd be like, yes, yes, crappie fishing. The reason this is so good is it's, a takeoff of the float and fly. I mean, an original technique, the Dale Hollow back in Tennessee, you know, records were caught in the float and fly. This is the float and flatworm. And the reason I started doing it is if you think about it, think about all those spots that you like to throw a drop shot. You go into some areas where it's just super, super sticky. You, you know you've been there where no matter what kind of weight, no matter how light you go, you're, you're gonna get hung up every time. So you only get half a cast, you throw it along, and then you get hung up and you start spooking fish. The float and flatworm answers that problem because nothing touches the bottom, but I can still be very precise, just like with a drop shot, just like with a drop shot where you can go from an eight inch leader to an eight foot leader if you wish, it's the exact same with the float and the flatworm, except there's nothing touching the bottom. And that's the real reason I use this technique. I mean, there are situations where that bait, you know, it'll just sit in front of that fish and that fish will be looking and, and it will eat it. You know, it does get more bites, but really the reason it's so effective is just because it's more effective. If I threw a drop shot with that same bait in that area, I would catch half as many fish. And I can guarantee you that. Not because it's less effective, but because it spends more time hung up. When you eliminate all those hang ups and you eliminate the contact to the bottom and you simply adjust that bobber stopper up and down your line, it just makes you a more effective angler. One thing you're gonna realize right away is you definitely want to use a longer rod. I'm. Uh, using a nine foot uh, Abu Garcia Veritas and it, it gives me a lot of leverage. That's what the length is all about. When you remember, you got a lot of line out there. I mean, especially if you're fishing in deeper water and that, that floats, you know, four, five, six feet down, that bait below the float, you need leverage. The longer your rod, the easier it's gonna be. You want a lot of line pickup, it's gonna make you more effective. You ain't gonna mess with the snags. And, Really? I mean, who watching this show wants more snags? Other than the lure companies. That's right. Nobody. So it'll, it's snagless. Snagless because it doesn't touch the bottom. But I did hook myself in the head a few times when I first started. Got to be honest. Oh, there he is. Oh, smoked it. Man, right by that grass. It's all about the edge. <laughs> find a fish, you find an edge. I mean, it really is just that simple. And that's the one thing people forget. If you're not near an edge, there's a pretty good chance you're not near a fish. Come here, Junior, you're not big enough to be like that. Little dude, but man, awesome, awesome, awesome. I always say, baits, presentations, techniques, I mean, they are all tools figure out the right tool for the job you're confronted with. I mean, if you've watched this show, you know I love drop shotting, and I love drop shotting a little flatworm like this, but you just can't do it effectively amongst this rock. 
I mean, you can swim a jig, you do a lot of things, but you're gonna spend a lot of time hung up. Remove the problem, and the problem is the bottom, and how you do it is with the float and flatworm. There he is. Oh, oh another big one. Look at that fish right there. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. That is a big Beauchene bass. Oh man, strong, strong fish. Oh man, what a beautiful, beautiful small jaw. And for as far north as we are, that's a big dude. Oh, the little troll car is buried in there. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. It ain't your fault, dude. You had no choice. Floating flatworm is just one of those presentations that drives fish crazy.